Probably won't be able to hear me with that fan, but that's okay. So uh, we didn't think this through. We painted only one side, and now all the boards are warped. <laughs> See, that wasn't as bad. The skinny one, right? Now. It's, it's, a, it's the big, thick one. Yeah, so if I hold that up, you can definitely see the bow in there. We should have painted both ends. It bows towards the paint. So, that's a thing. We are rounding the corners that will be the bottom part of our border for our gently rolling hills. We want to make sure it fits snug before cutting the final design. I don't know if I was recording for that. Oh, really? Oh, well. It's going to be one of those weird things. Now we have this continuity again. I just sanded the whole thing in the shape. Is that good, you guys? <laughs> Just wanted to point out this little nick that he's about to sand off. That was me using the jigsaw on the wrong spot. Always X out the waist side of your wood, So what fellas. we're going to do is first round over that top edge and leave this was extra long. So, And then we can actually use this to trace the shape out exactly once we fit that in there. And that way we'll get a, a perfect tight fit. The hand thing there. I'm just trying to go a little bit inside the line like you're talking about. Or... Just it down. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Sneak up on it. First try. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty good, man. So doing, again, same method, even though this is a straight cut, using this as our measuring stick, just holding it underneath it and using it as a trace. When we last left our woodworking hero, Greg, pieces were falling off his table saw. Well, much to his wife's chagrin, Greg decided it was time to upgrade a few things in the shop. New chop saw and table saw. Saw envy no more. He also built this awesome massive workstation on wheels that incorporates all his tools into a one car garage. He really needs to make a video about this thing. It's super sweet. Down here, this guy's got a little dust deputy and some PVC pipe tubing. And then he made these little blast gates right there to slide in and open and close. Same with the dust there. A the little blast gate right by his table saw. And eventually there'll be a router table, probably somewhere over there, maybe. Yeah, over there. Pretty sweet. Off camera, Greg edge joined some poplar. These larger boards will serve as our trees. Using the same method with the other parts of the frame, he's tracing where the trees will ultimately end into the hills. So, it looks like the tensioning spring on Greg's bandsaw is kaput, so we are changing venues. <laughs> Greg and I each designed our own trees for the picture. Greg joked that I went for the crazy wild cypress tree. Meanwhile, he went for the stately oak that resides in an HOA community. Honestly though, I think they both turned out great. Greg hadn't used a scroll saw like this since shop class many moons ago. But it's like riding a bike, right? Except that bikes can't cut off your fingers, of course. I was telling Greg I don't think a scroll saw could easily do that. I mean, it'll probably give you stitches. But it's not so strong that it's going to take a finger off before you know what's happening, right? 
I switch over to the bandsaw for most of mine, but eventually I have to finish on the scroll saw as well. The cool thing about a scroll saw is it lets you make internal cuts. First you need to drill a starter hole, then you can thread the scroll saw blade through that hole. Of course jigsaws allow for the same type of operation, but a scroll saw is just more delicate about the whole thing. It's funny because it's a tool that does not get much attention. And I guess if you're into furniture and other large projects, you can certainly get by without one. But if you're like me and into more intricate artistic type projects, it's an absolute joy to use. All right, we're doing glue up today. Every woodworker's favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, let me show something real quick here. Um, so we've numbered, I guess, the rows. It's yeah. kind of hard to pick up there. And I'm assuming on the back of these we have matching numbers. This is the one right here on the top. That's the last one. Yeah, that's one. Getting really faint, but uh, on the camera you can kind of pick up some of those there. So that's how we won't get confused. Greg made a call out of old pieces of plywood. It's actually like a compound call, if there is such a thing, since it has extra pieces of wood above and below, and it's held down by some more pieces of wood clamped to the ends of the table. He uses some wax paper on the contact points, that way the boards won't stick to the call. We use screwdrivers to ensure that the boards are pushed against one another. We're not concerned about them being flush with the edges, since we have a second border layer going on top to cover that anyways. It's very much like the concept of a floating floor. You leave a small gap between the walls, which is hidden by the quarter rounds. The advantages of this are multifold. One, it allows for wood expansion and contraction, and two, you have a lot more play in making your cuts. Your precision doesn't have to be that high because it's going to be covered up by the quarter rounds. We use whatever we can find to weight down the glue up. Paint cans, glue bottles, you name it. Despite our best efforts with the call, the bottom layer with the wide boards is warped even after the glue dries. So we decide that we have to pry them up. I have the not so bright idea of using a clothes iron on the warped boards to smooth them back down. All we ended up accomplishing was getting glue on Greg's wife's clothes iron. Sorry Ashley, don't try this at home kids. So in the end, we have to redo the entire bottom portion. The final tricky part of this glue up is getting the trees to fit within the frame. Even though we cut them to size, we did not mark the exact spots they fit in the frame. This was extra tricky because we had rolling hills rather than a flat bottom as a frame of reference. And my crazy ungroomed tree proved to be the most difficult. We actually had to sand off some of the bottom to get it to fit, but we get there eventually. We are gluing leaves to the branches of the tree. The paper is to protect from dripping. It's like doing surgery. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> the leaves themselves are made from epoxy resin and dyes. I used a leaf mold I got from Amazon. It's actually for cake decorating, but it's 100% silicone, so it worked just fine. We, we used 5 minute epoxy to attach to the table. Yep. Nah. <laughs> nice. All right. Driving to the library, driving 
So I mentioned in the beginning of this project that this is for charity. Let me explain. The Pop Harbor Library is running a project. It's a chance for the local community to upcycle old tables the library has. While there was a wide variety of styles on display, ours was the only woodworking table. He does like a funny walk. That was in the uh, newspaper. Yeah, they did an amazing job on this one. Getting a glare from the, uh, if I go this way. Yeah. So you can see there's a glass on there. I forgot we're in a library. I'm sorry. This is a. Let's see what we do there. I'm getting like a glare if I don't get the right angle. <laughs> Check out. That's funny. Oh my god, this is one of the best ones, man. Look at this guy. He's gonna be like the next Picasso or something like that. And it's like a big playing card, that's so cool. He's very clever. I like to do the legs too. Oh, I couldn't yeah. think of what to do with the legs. I, know, I didn't even I notice that. Like I the rose. I like too, and I don't know. I kind of regret it, but at the same time, I don't know what I'm Yeah. Like top hat legs. I'll include that on there. Before we take it off. That's cool. Detail on that bird is really nice. This for the library's 40th anniversary was all the kids that came in that week. That's cute. And this is the paint pour, which was going to be Plan A. Probably a good idea to do it because I've never done one before, so we would hate to screw that up. The, the thing about paint pours though is like you screw it up, you just paint over the top of it. I like this one a lot, actually. Is that what it was with fingers? No kidding.